everybody, my name is Brandy and I would like to welcome you to the Venus Project Challenge. I find it amusing that while over 380,000 people, and counting, share the vision of Jacques Fresco in the directions of the Venus Project, it hasn't received any significant attention from the mainstream media. If there are any so-called subject matter experts who are legitimately against ending the monetary system and establishing a global resource-based economy, then why not just come right out and say so and stop all the madness? Why not just put the opposing evidence together in a neat little presentation and explain why it's not a good idea or explain why it won't work? Why has the discussion of something as monumental as the Venus Project, an opportunity for a complete global facelift, been left behind closed doors to be debated by online bloggers? What would happen if a politician or an economist were to debate this issue publicly? And don't say that the governments have more important things to focus on, because if the world's governments supposedly have bigger things to worry about than this big-ass sphere we live on, I think it's safe to say that we're far better off putting any alternative into effect as soon as possible, rather than relying on such governments. That being said, I invite you to take the Venus Project Challenge. Uh, uh, he said it! He said it! Before you take off your gloves, if you take a closer look, you'll notice that I am in fact not Jacques Fresco or Peter Joseph, meaning I don't claim to be an expert on the subject matter of the Venus Project. However, based on the extensive research that I've done regarding their work, combined with the research of outside sources, I do believe, along with all the other crazy utopians, that it is the best option in the interest of sustainability and consequently our quality of life. So, throughout my series, I will be addressing various aspects concerning the Venus Project. My goal is to upgrade the caliber of Venus Project conversations we've been having by challenging everyone to introduce some real frame of reference from the actual Venus Project criteria into the points you're making. If you have comments, questions, or objections, that's fine and always welcome, but in the interest of having the most productive discussion possible, everyone needs to really understand what the Venus Project is, everything it proposes, and exactly how it's supposed to work in the first place. In other words, you don't have to agree with everything, but you should at least know which questions have already been answered and which issues have already been addressed before discussing it. If you've read the answers to certain questions and you're not satisfied, please explain your position based on that and we can openly discuss it from there. To get everyone up to speed, I'd like to establish some ground rules. Now, these general rules are not to give anyone an advantage or disadvantage, but to simply ensure the highest quality of participation in order to avoid wasting valuable time. You'll see what I mean. Rule number one, first and foremost, is to read all of the frequently asked questions. To do this, please go to www.thevenusproject.com, hover over introduction, and when the little menu appears, click on FAQ. Why? Simple. I've read the entire FAQ, and the experts have already taken the time to answer every question in great detail. So if you don't have the time to read all the questions and answers, then you're probably in no position to even debate this issue. Rule number two, get your facts straight. Guys, please, please, please get your facts straight. We really, we just do not have time to compare the Venus Project to Bigfoot's New World Order. For starters, the project is under the direction of Jacques Fresco, a 93-year-old proven social engineer, industrial designer, author, lecturer, futurist, and inventor, and his ideas have the support and verification of research done by major universities and qualified scientists and other literature. Meaning, his ideas on social change and human behavior, for example, aren't based on his personal opinions, they're based on scientific facts. I'm not saying he's the end-all and be-all of the world, I'm just saying he has seven decades of qualified experience and even more evidential support from old and new research. Therefore, if you are opposed to his ideas, I don't just want your lackadaisical opinion. By all means, you're certainly entitled to it, but it's not going to change my mind or invoke critical thinking, which is what I'm looking for in the first place. So, in short, stick to the facts, and if you have an opinion, back it up. Rule number three, keep it relevant. Sounds easy enough, I know, but this is YouTube, so I'm well aware that it is not only a possibility, but a probability that certain clever people who are just so absolutely bored and so tempted will spam up the comments section with obscurities. You know, some random comment about my outfit or my hair, or Jacques' outfit or Jacques' hair, or some really ignorant blanket statement about someone's race or religion. Say what you want, but the bottom line is, this is a challenge. 
So the more insubstantial crap you present as your case, which is essentially no case at all, the better you make everyone else look. And if you can't really muster up more than raw emotions and translucent insults, you're just making a fool of yourself. You're not proving anything, and you're certainly not contributing to the challenge. Not to mention you just look very childish and unoriginal since everyone over the age of three knows how to post a useless comment. Last but not least is rule number four. Rise to the challenge. This last rule is a tough one, so try to keep up. When challenging the Venus Project, you need to apply the same challenge to today's society globally and ask yourself, are the potential results better or worse? In other words, the Venus Project doesn't claim to be a perfect solution, just a better direction for our overall quality of life and sustainability. So if your argument is simply, the Venus Project can't solve all of our problems, fine. Point out which ones, but in order to rise to the challenge, you need to explain how the Venus Project could possibly make things worse. Just because we can't solve all of our problems doesn't mean we shouldn't solve any of them, and in this case, probably most of them. Anyway, I think that about covers the rules. Read the FAQ, get your facts straight, keep it relevant, and rise to the challenge. Before I go, for any of you that aren't involved, I want to address the dangerous notion that the Venus Project is just another pie in the sky and can't possibly solve our real problems. Okay, if the 70-year project of a 93-year-old professional is a pie in the sky, then we have a lot to learn about making pie. Here's the deal, guys. If Jacques Fresco can dedicate his entire life to improving life on Earth for everyone, everyone but himself at this point, honestly, then the least we can do is dedicate a mere fraction of that time to really understanding his ideas before just dismissing them. The reasons that I support the Venus Project are not because it's a simple answer to the world's complicated problems. I support it because, on the contrary, it's a very well-thought-out combination of solutions to what are actually simple problems socioeconomic problems that we can no longer ignore. The Venus Project recognizes these problems, and Fresco has been working on the solutions since around 1940, after the Great Depression, and his foundations of science for the well-being of humans still hold true today. Dreamers are accused of being lazy people who would just rather blame everything on society's shortcomings, but I think it's the complacent people who aren't willing to properly research and then challenge these new ideas that are the lazy ones. They'd rather just settle for the status quo, regardless of those suffering around them. So why not get off our butts and truly put this proposal to the test? I guess it's easier to just call it crazy and then go sit in traffic on the way to work. One way or another, we will end up in a system that's not based on money as we know it today. Why? Because that will be realized in the future by historians as the total and pivotal cause of the destruction of civilization as we know it. That will be understood in the future. Historians will look back and say, holy shit, they were making materials, selling them for corporation profit over and over and over and over again with absolutely no reference to what the planet had and recycling protocols and everything else. They were burning fossil fuels at a million times the rate of their actual renewability. They're going to laugh at us, wondering what the hell kind of primitive, dumbass species we actually were if we even survive to reach that point. So, I hate to sound condescending and negative, I hate to throw out all this rhetoric, but I'm fairly irritated uh, at this point, and I try not to be. I just want to make it understood that the entire system that we live in is a sham. It's a false system, falsivity defined by the fact that it cannot be sustained. It's that simple, and we propose a resource-based economy. I hope everyone watching this film will go to www.thezeitgeistmovement.com and understand what we're doing. I hope everyone out there will understand that either we change or we die. Proposing viable solutions to our pressing problems as a globe isn't a utopian fantasy, but the notion that we can continue competing with each other, consuming everything in our path without consequence, that's definitely a fantasy. That concludes my first video for Take the Venus Project Challenge. Welcoming your intelligent questions, comments, and feedback. If you follow the rules. Also, 500 character limit bugs you, or if you're not a YouTube member, you can send an email to tvpchallenge at gmail.com. Thank you for playing.